But I just want to show you what I've done and what I've got ready to go at the moment. You know I've got these uh, collection of lawnmowers. Well, this week I said I'm not going to go to any auctions. And uh, all I'm going to do is work on the stuff which I've actually got here. Otherwise, I'm just having loads and loads of stock because at the end of the season, I don't want to be left with a load of lawnmowers. So that's why I've, I'm not going to many auctions this week or maybe even next week. So let's just show you what I've done within the last couple of days. This is one I bought the other day when I bought three mowers. It was a self-propelled one. I can't remember what I paid for it now. This is this this come with the other one, the two 15 pound mowers. So as you can see, I actually repainted the deck on that one. That one's ready to go. That's on eBay at the moment. So that one's ready to go now. This one's actually been sold. This was another one I repainted. Um, you might remember that one. That has actually been sold now. That's waiting collection tomorrow. This one's nearly finished. This little plastic one. Uh, that's up to about fifty pound at the moment, believe it or not. So. Happy with that one. And this is one which I was working on first thing this morning, 10 to 9. I had a chap come round the other day, a local lad, who uh, see my lawnmowers on eBay, and decided to, obviously, that he wanted one. He was going away on holiday. He wanted that for the red one up there, first of all. But as I say, I can't withdraw that because I've got somebody else bidding on it. So I said, this one was ready. This one will be ready to go by the time he comes back. So. I've actually done that this morning. All I've literally done is clean it up, give it a good service, and I didn't need to repaint that one. Everything works well, and that's ready to go now. So there's about a £75, £80 mower there. Uh, he'll pick that up, obviously, tomorrow or the day after when he comes back off his holiday. So there's that, that, that mower there, that mower there, three mowers there ready to go, and this one over here, which is just gone on eBay. So. There's four mowers there in total, all ready to go. So I've just started on another one now. Again, this had a broken uh, bolt that was stuck in there, and the handle was all flappy, and the rear adjusters weren't working. So I've just pulled this back section off, and you probably know I've got that one down there, which come without any wheels. I'll just remove that back section off that one. I'll paint the deck on this one, actually, and this will look uh, as good as new when it's actually painted. With that new back section in, as I say, I think I might have a grass box. It won't be the proper one for this. Uh, it'll probably be one of these ones here. Uh, that one there, for example. We'll have to make a slight alteration to the bracket on it, but that's not a problem. And, yeah, that's what that's where I am at the moment. You can see what I've got left. I've got another one of them left. I've got... That's an old deck which I've uh, just used, used for parts. As I say, the old deck's rusted out there, so I'm not too worried about the deck. It's just the other bits levers and wheels and stuff that one is possibly nearly ready to go that just needs a handle sorting out i think that one there again i bought that for parts that one that'll have a good engine on it the deck's actually been repaired with fiberglass but i'm not too worried about that that one there i've actually used the motor and the wheel off of that one for another mower which is now gone there's another little one there i think it looks like a champion or something like that um again without a grass box but just wants a basic clean up and it's ready to go there's a, a fly mower in the corner there then I've got this Empress which has got a rear roller I've got another Mountfield petrol mower there again without a grass box but I may be able to adapt to another one of them if not I'll have to sell that without a grass box there's another uh, Mountfield Quantum over there which I think is a fiberglass body one but I'm not too sure about that one whether that is a repaint or whether it's just going to be a clean up job, I'm not too sure how they repaint to be honest with you. There's another mount field down there, again that's a big one without any box again, that's just a spare base. There's another mount field there with an engine and a box, but it's an old looking one, I'll probably repaint that one, it's aluminium with the white handles. As I say, you know about this mount field one, and there's also another mount field there with a scabby base. And another, uh, I'm not too sure what that one is to be honest with you. It is a mount field, yeah that one is a mount field, so again without a box. So that's there. Now let me just show you what else I've got as well. Then we've got this little cubby hole. Here, you haven't seen this one. There's a few mowers in here. Mostly the old core cast or, or whatever. What else have we got there? There's a plastic one there, I don't know what that is. There's another Flymo one at the top there. There's a nice hater there actually, I didn't even know I had that. How about that? Look. I'll probably dig that one out, that's got to be worth a few bob, that hater. Um, there's another little hater body there, which I think I bought for spares. 
So yeah, I mean these little ones here, these little um, punch 35 classic punches. I think I bought three of these. One, two, three. Yeah, I've got three of these. I've also got this old Honda motorbike here, which is still <laughs> awaiting my treatment. You've probably seen on my channel that I've done the other one, but that's just another one I've got waiting to go. So yeah, I mean this is this is the other side of my log cabin. If you if I knock a hole through that door, I'll be in the other log cabin basically. So. I want to utilise this space to put a, a, a workbench along there and also use this uh, as a, a working area mostly for either spraying or actually repairing stuff so yeah that's that's all these have got to be done so I'm going to start cracking on with doing these now and hopefully you'll see them on the videos now for those of you that are interested this is my little compressor I do go on about that I use a compressor quite a lot but basically it's a Clark Radio 60 I think that relates to the size of the um, the tank or something, is it 60 litre it might be, I don't know, I'm not too sure. But this thing is um, what I use for quite a lot of stuff. I have it basically up to the settings actually on 120 pounds maximum at the moment. Uh, it's got a water trap on it which is uh, for catching the water obviously. But that hose, all that's connected to is a long hose, which as you can see here, and on the end of it you can have various attachments this is my air hose for blowing stuff off as you can see there but that just comes off you pop that off and um, you can have a whole host of attachments on that let me just put this camera down for a minute again this is mostly the tools which I use the uh, airline for this one here as you can probably see is the DA which you basically just clicked it on there like that it's a dual action sander with a velcro pad on so I'll get my sanding discs attach them onto there and as you can see that's the DA sander so to change over to this tool it's just literally pull out and push on and there you've got that's a grinding disc there so again one of the other tools which I'm using all the time is, as you know, my spray guns. And that is just... I set these by this little dial gauge on there. And then I, I, I've got this hose, can go all over my house. I've got extension hoses which I plug on. And um, I can take this to the front of the house via this hose, basically. And the other thing I've got over there which you're probably aware of is my sandblasting cabinet so this again works exactly the same way it's got an attachment at the front there and I just click that on there and inside there is a where is it? I've got a spare one here this is a sandblasting nozzle so there's one of these inside this cabinet you can switch the light on up there basically and this basically goes into a hose this is full of sand or grip media or whatever in the bottom there and you can put your equipment in there that needs to be sandblasted turn the vacuum on because it's got a, a, a suction extraction at the end there and you're basically cleaning parts with this when it's shooting out sand and grip so this hose basically does a multitude of things but Mostly when I'm doing car bodywork repairs. There you go. That's, just, that's that. Use it for spraying. Absolutely fantastic for spraying. And you can even have air tools on it, like a, a impact driver and stuff like that. Or you can even use it to pump your tyres up or inflate things. There's a car attachment there for pumping your car tyres up, basically. So that is one of the benefits of having air tools if you're going to be running um, a sandblasting cabinet like I've got here it can struggle because when I'm sandblasting it's basically running near enough all the time so but for the, the spraying you, you, you can ha have a much smaller compressor than the one I've got there and that will do the job perfectly so yeah, basically all you're doing is changing the settings on the compressor for the different types of work. The sandblasting cabinet 
I think that requires 90 to 100 PSI. Uh, the DA, I just leave that at the same setting. I don't basically touch them settings on there. The only thing I touch the settings for is with the actual spray guns, and the spray guns have got their own um, bar gauges on, so I alter the pressure basically via there. So, yeah, I spray at 28 PSI. Uh, is it 28 PSI? Yeah, two bars, about 28 PSI when I'm spraying a car, but I might turn it down just a little bit for other things. And as I say, that's the grinding wheel for cutting metal or cutting off bolts or stuff that are a bit stuck. Great tool, that. Cut all sorts of sheet metal with that. Yeah, so basically that's it. That's a compressor. That's what I use the compressor for. Plus the main thing, as I, as I said to you, is blowing down parts, cleaning parts out. If I clean something out in some petrol or whatever, and then I just attach that to the end of it. And just touch that to the end of it. That will blow absolutely anything away. Look how strong that is. Look. That's from standing about five foot away. You can see that as you take all that, that's how strong that is. And it blows all the crap away, so yeah, get yourself a small compressor. That's the one I've got there, it's a Clark Raider. I've had this one about seven or eight years. Um, and as I say, it's, it's, um, I've never really used it until I started doing these little, little ventures about repairing stuff, the cars I've been spraying and stuff like that. But um, if you're definitely doing this sort of work, it's one of the tools to get. And they're not very deep, you don't you ain't got to spend a lot of money. I think you can get a decent one for about £150. Yeah, so as I say, the sandblasting cabinet will take a lot of air. But for general spraying or even sanding or using these tools or blowing, just blowing parts clean and stuff like that, Absolutely fantastic. So, there you go. That's what I've been up to. I'm going to have some lunch now because uh, Sharon's doing doing a sandwich. But I'm going to get this one ready. Look at that lovely day out there. Look, absolutely fantastic. And I'm working out in this. So, happy days, eh? Enjoy. Thanks very much for watching.